This segment of the news is brought to you by Sun Oil Limited. Welcome back. University of the Bahamas students firing back at the administration in response to a statement issued by University Relations. Student Government President Stuart Hanna says he does not agree with the university's aggressive approach. I think that they should have taken a much more discussion-based approach in which they would have said, uh, we will sit down with all parties involved and we'll try to reach a conclusion. I hope that the senior class as well as student government will fight this to the end and ensure that students' voices are heard so that we can reach a, a, a solution. I'm very appalled because how can you lock students out of a library when they are paying their money to access the facility? You cannot lock students out of a library and expect there to be no reaction. If they hadn't locked us out of the library, the protest wouldn't have turned out the way that it did. And with the calling of the police, it was totally unnecessary that you have police coming with high power guns for unarmed students. It was, it was very uncalled for and I hope that those in charge sees it and that they handle it accordingly. University relations yesterday issued a statement in response to the protest conducted on campus saying that the wearing of stoles representing the various clubs and organizations are prohibited at the upcoming graduation ceremony. However, our news team caught up with students who think that this decision was disrespectful. Um, we do have um, Ivy League schools in the U.S. that wear stoles and that, cel that shows a, a thing of celebration and so Students being able to wear their stoles or decorate their hat is just a way of expressing themselves and showing pride in the clubs and organizations that they would have been in. Keep in mind, most of the students that attend this school would have been here for four, five, six years. And so just to have that moment on the stage to represent all that they have done on the school is a bit, um, it's a prideful moment for them. And so to take that away, I don't think it's fair to the students and to the whole population at large. I think it was filled with a lot of excuses. Um, it's sad that we had to get that official response after we did like an entire protest. Um, we knew about the ban for, I would say about a week and a half to two weeks ago and the president nor the council came to us saying anything. We basically got it from word of mouth. Um, so I just felt as if it basically shows that they don't respect us as students because the least you could have done was have a conversation or have a meeting, call a meeting with all of the graduates. We understand that students intend to continue fighting the university on this matter. And despite backlash from the Bahamas Doctors Union and consultant physicians, Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands sticking to the comments he made during the mid-year budget contribution, and that is that there is a minority group of clinicians who are underperforming, responding to recent comments made by both organizations. Dr. Sands says that Bahamians deserve value for their money. The the same concerns that I would have voiced are concerns that the HDA or Junior Doctors Union have as well. And they speak with great concern about the minority of non-performing consultants. And the concern that there are people who take advantage of Junior Doctors, who do not teach Junior Doctors who benefit disproportionately from the work of junior doctors. Understand that in medicine, there is an apprenticeship. So you have medical students that are trained, they become interns that are trained, they become senior house officers that are trained, they become registrars, senior registrars, and then consultants. So the consultant is the most experienced, the most competent, the most qualified physician in the group but they have a responsibility to everybody below them, to everybody who they nurture, that they train. Uh, and that is a huge responsibility because ultimately, the consultant is responsible for all of the care that's delivered in the hospital. However, the health minister does agree that there are some major issues that need to be addressed. The overwhelming majority of physicians go above and beyond. That is my position. It has always been in my position. Been my position. At the same time, for the last 24 years, working in the Princess Margaret Hospital and the Rand Memorial Hospital, a perennial concern of hard-working physicians has been the freeloader. So yes, all of these issues have to be dealt with. We have to deal with issues of compensation. We have to deal with issues of malpractice. We have to deal with issues of equipment failures and lack of equipment and outdated equipment, etc. That is the commitment. The commitment is to take this broken down health system 
and move it forward. A multi-billion dollar resort is trying to move beyond the typical behemoth experience of soaking up sun, sand and sea or rolling a dice in the casino. Bahamar's thinking long term that calls for doing what it can to preserve the islands of the Bahamas. Sharing its vision is the Bahamas National Trust. The two yesterday signed a memorandum of understanding in terms of the protection of foreign imported flamingos. Bahamas President Graham Davis says the resort's pleased to be doing its part to make a positive contribution to the environment. The BNT this week held its annual Bahamas Natural History Conference. And our final story is up next. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.